Today we're talking about uh, using a subtotal function in Excel to automatically insert subtotals and grand totals. Here I've got a list of sales and I already have it sorted by sales rep. And so if I want to insert subtotals for each sales rep, obviously I could go through manually and insert a line and use the sum function and build all of my totals that way. Uh, but there's a much easier way to do it. Um, there is a couple of requirements. Obviously, it has to be sorted on how you want to subtotal it, or it's not going to work. But also, you have to have uh, the, the field that you're totaling on, you have to have that populated on every line. Like here, I've got the sales rep ID on every line. I couldn't just have it on the first one like that in order for this to work. So, to use the subtotal function, uh, you want to start out make sure that your your current cell is within the table you want to total. If you have any breaks in your data, like if you have empty columns or empty rows, then in order to get this to work right, you want to make sure that you select the uh, the whole area manually. Uh, you could do it like that, or you can select the columns. Uh, but for this example, it'll work just to let Excel auto select it. So I've got my cursor in the table. I'm going to go to the data tab on the ribbon. And then over here in the outline group, I'm going to click on subtotal. So here in the first field, we can tell it uh, what we want to subtotal on. So at each change in sales rep ID, um, we want to insert a subtotal. And you can choose any of your columns. We want to use the sum function. You can see you've got lots of other choices there. Count, average, max, minimum. Um, most of the time, you'll probably want to use the sum. And then you can choose which columns it's going to, to subtotal. Now, I only have one numeric column, so um, Excel already guessed that that's what I was going to want to subtotal. We've got three more options down here. Replace current subtotals, which is fine in this case. Um, page break between groups, I'm going to leave turned off. And then summary below data, that option adds the grand total at the bottom. I'm going to click OK. And you can see that now every time my sales rep ID changes, a row is inserted and we've got the subtotal in there. We also have this um, over here on, on the left edge that wasn't there before. If I click on the one, I see just the grand total. If I click on the two, now I see just my subtotals. I go back to three and I see all the detail. And you can expand or collapse items in here too. Like uh, if we go back to two and you want to look at the gross you can click on that one and it expand just that section. So it makes it really easy to navigate a, uh, a large set of data. Now, you can also do multiple levels of subtotaling. Uh, let's go over here to the second tab. And here you can see I've got the same data, but I've added a sales region. So we've got an east region and a west region. So I want uh, subtotals on both. Um, now, the important thing is you need to start adding subtotals using the largest grouping. So for us that's going to be region. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll say subtotal. We add each change in region. Use the sum function on the amount. And all these options are just fine. We'll click OK. And you can see we've got our east total, our west total, and our grand total. Now I'm going to go back to the subtotal again. And I'm going to change so that each at each change in, instead of region, I'm going to say sales rep ID. I still want it to be the amount. Now, I want to make sure I do not replace current subtotals. Um, otherwise, I would wipe out my region subtotals. This way, it's just going to add to it. And I'm going to click OK. And now, we see we've got four levels over here instead of three like we had before. So, we've got a subtotal for each sales rep. And then, a subtotal for the region and a grand total at the bottom. And you can go back through the collapsible outline again to see each of those. And of course the one button that I didn't mention before, if we go back to subtotal, if you decide you want to take them all out and start over, there's a remove all button. And that will remove all the subtotals and you're back to where you started. Now in my next few tips I'm going to be talking about some related things. Uh, for one, here you can see that this uses a subtotal function instead of the sum function. I'm going to be doing another tip talking about that. And I'll also be talking about how you can use this grouping, even if you're, you're not using the automatic subtotal function. 
and I'm also going to talk about how you can structure your data so if you have data that's like this how you could easily um, go through and fill those back in which is a simple thing here but on a large spreadsheet is a lot of work so uh, watch for those tips uh, coming up over the next couple months